Right, well it's time for another review. But this time we're here with a loco review, we're not here with a build review. And today we're looking at a Batman model, as you can see, and it's the Class 45XX Prairie Tank. <coughs> I have been after one of these for a long time. In fact, this locomotive has been on my wish list for years, but I've never actually got one until now. And this has been in my box for at least a week, because it was bought last weekend at the Seven Valley Railways Spring Steam Gala on the Saturday. And I've only just got round to opening it. And so it is 32129A, Class 45XX Prairie Tank, number 45... 45 or 4545 whichever you prefer to say it is DCC ready because it's an 8 pin decoder and it's in the BR black with the early emblem as you can see and I bought this at the Seven Valley Railway shop for £72 it's not the first model I've bought from the Seven Valley well no it's not the first model <laughs> I was going to say because the GWR Grange was bought at the Seven Valley in the carriage shop at Budley. This was bought at Kidderminster, like I said before, at the Seven Valley Railway shop. So, let's get this open and see what it's like. There is a reason why I've gone for BR Black, which we'll explain in a bit. So on the back you have the brief history of the loco. They were a development of Churchwood's earlier 44XX class tank locomotives and they were almost identical, but the major differences really were the note of the 45XX having larger diameter driving wheels and the profile of the running plate, which was changed to a curved drop end. And they are the design of, well, they have the wheel arrangement of 262, which basically is where the term prairie comes from, which we'll explain in a bit when we get the model out. And they were originally built at Stafford Road Works at Wolverhampton between 1906 and 1908. And these engines were distinctive in having copper caped chimneys and cast number plates on the side tanks. And the second batch were constructed at Swindon Works from 1909. However, the destruction ceased in 1924 and withdrawals occurred as early as 1950 due to the age of the early spilled 45XXs. It doesn't say how many were preserved, which is different, but I can say how many that are preserved. There are at least seven of them. But anyway, now let's open this model up. So there's the box cover. And so I'll just pull out this plastic shell or case. Then we'll put that bit to one side and here are the instructions and all the other things that you need to know. And this model, this particular one, was released last year because this one is a new release, hence what's in the new star packaging. The Prairie Tanks has been out before last year but this one was released down in last year, which is good in a way. So you have the product maintenance and care, and on the other back you have the warranty, and you have the leaflet to the Batman Collectors Club. And then here's the instructions for this locomotive, which is the usual as you can see, so it's nothing really different. So we'll put that to one side because it is going to go into the folder later. Okay, so all we do now is just take off the plastic case. And then we can get to the details. In which in this case it's just one brake pipe which is quite curious, I've never seen that before, a bag that only includes one bit of detailing. And I think it goes on the back of the loco actually on the bunker. So that's quite curious, that is. And then there we are. 
so I'll just lift out the lower cam and we'll put the package in to one side while it's fell on the floor but anyway so this is what we're here for so here is the 45XX prairie tank in all its glory now the reason why I've chosen BR Black Early Emblem is because during the weekend the Seven Valley Railway's resident small prairie 4566 has recently been repainted into this livery and I was very impressed and so it urged me to buy this model in the livery which I think looks really nice some people might not like the livery but it's not too bad you know the old saying any livery as long as it's black and the other reason is I can get this double head in with some of my other BR black tank engines like the Pannier the Gin T, whatever and that will look quite cool and it will also look great hauling the maroon stock well it will look good hauling any stock but you know maroon stock it will look nice okay so to talk about the wheel arrangement it's 262 which is where the term prairie comes from this is the small prairie I'll just get the large prairie right so here's the large prairie now this is an old mainline model and you can see how much use it had because it's actually beginning to show some wear <laughs> such as for example the front buffers I'm missing the paintwork is slightly tatty and of course the handrails are actually missing although they I don't think they were before to be honest but you can see the wear and tear it's had and of course the side rod that should be connected to here is not there that's because it snapped off some years ago and so it couldn't really be used so it had to be removed but it's called the large prairie because well take a guess because it's larger than the small prairie but it's still got the wheel arrangement 262 and this applies to all the locomotives such as the L in the RV2 which technically is a prairie because it has the same wheel arrangement and also the L in the R V3s and V1s they had this wheel arrangement as well and also the LMS 262s the nicknamed the Mickey Mouse tanks and the Southern Region 3MTs also had this wheel arrangement so that is where the term prairie comes from basically so for example this is a prairie tank because it's a tank engine and the wheel arrangement is prairie in the case of the V2 it's just a prairie because well it's a tender engine and not a tank engine so that's pretty much the idea basically but we'll shift away the large prairie because it's not really going to be needed now for the rest of this review so back on to the small prairie so what to say about it well for starters there is a fair bit of weight in the model which is what we need because if there was no weight in here at all it wouldn't be able to pull anything the cylinders are very nicely detailed with these drain cocks which are already stuck in so it saves a job and then you get these footsteps here then you have the link motion and the valve gear which is connected up really nicely and that is the I forget what that's called I think it's a motion bracket I think that's what it's called the reel arrangement is accurate wheel arrangement sorry doesn't exactly roll off the tongue there and of course you get sprung buffers as you would with Batman and you get a nice little hook there at the front so you could put a chaining one if you wanted to and there is a brake pipe fitted on the front and of course the couplings they are removable but have a different style of removing them which is different but I don't really have an intention of removing them anyway you get some lamp pines on the front and a small handrail and you do get rivets on the running plate as well and there are a few on the running board as well as you can see I have some more detail here which I think is really cool you have a handrail that runs around the front of the loco you have a nice chimney as well with another handrail at the top and the smoke box door is really detailed with the hand doors and the running number 4545 
Sorry about that, then I got interrupted. So the shed cowed reads. Eighty three G. So I'll just quickly find out where that is. Or what shed it was, actually, rather. Right, so I found out what the shed code is, and it's for Penzance, although it later became Temple Code. Well, according to the information that I found out, because it was for Temple Code and Penzance, so it's got to be either of the two. So I'm just going to assume it's Penzance. Okay, so back to the model, we have some sanding gear here as you can see and some more cab steps there then at the back you have another coupling which of course is movable sprung buffers and some rivets on the rear buffer beam if we just turn it round there's some rivets on the back and some small handrails and some more lamp irons and oh, we have a brake pipe added to the rear already. In fact, actually, oh yes, um, I can see uh, that little pipe that I showed in the bag earlier is meant to go at the front. Whether I'll add it though is going to be a different story because it looks like that with this coupling here, it will probably catch on it and then make it fall out. So it may not be added. Yet, I'll think about it. <laughs> Um, but you get some more of it as well on the side tanks. Just look at that. And you got an accurate early emblem there at, the f at the sides. Some more handrails. And there's the running number, 4545. And you get some nice coal in the top. It's not removable, but you could add it if you wanted. And there's the guardines on the back windows. Some more rivets on the roof. An event that doesn't open, so it's moulded, but... Oh well. And there's the windows at the front with added glazing, as you can just about see. There's the whistles at the top and the typical GWR safety valve. And some more detail at the top, like the washout plugs and the water filler caps. And there's some more rivets on the smoke box as well, which is really good. And there's a small handrail on the top. And if we turn around to the other side, the details pretty much the same. Footstep, handrails, rivets, the running number again, the early emblem which is accurate and a true work of art in my opinion and there's all the detail at the top. And then for the cab detail, well it doesn't look painted but I suppose you could do it if you wanted to. Now it's not painted, so I can't see any painted bits, but you could always paint it if you wanted to, but then you wouldn't really see it very well anyway, considering it's a tank engine. And that's basically about it, really. A very good model, and I'm very impressed. But now what we need to do is, well... You know what's coming. You guessed it. Putting it on the tracks and running it. Okay, so here we are at the track. And so today I'm going to run the new prairie on this line. That's what I think makes a change. So, yeah, the wheels are on. Just give it a wiggle. Ah yes, the power wasn't turned on. But so everything seems to be in order. So let's get running. So far, she seems to be running really well. There's no grinding noises or juttering. So, she's passing the seaside where you can see the Queen Elizabeth II, which you would have seen the build review. Surely, by now. So, passing the sheds where Traction Magazine is there. 
West in for its turn of duty, the next one. There's the four VEP, permanently parked on the side here. Well, not permanently parked, but you know what I mean. And there's the Duke Dog, which I still need to do the double heading with the Dean Single, so I have to get down to that soon. And then there's the Clan Class, Clan Blue Cannon, which you will see more of. So here's the prairie, just now passing the signal box. And through the station. And the coach body where the security tension is put up. I might have to get some more and put some along that bit there. in the sheds again and the road which well there's not many buildings but there will be some more there trust me and then the prairie is just about to go under the bridge over the crossing and through the tunnel and she's going to appear through that portal well the petrol station sign has fallen over so we need to fix that And then she comes through the other end. Well, there's a few wagons and that parcel van is there. And back through the station. Right, so now we're going to get the prairie pulling this train of maroon coaches. So there's four coaches here plus the new parcels van. And she can pull this, just do watch. Look at that. So she started off pretty well. haven't seen anything yet, just how she manages to get round the bends. Look at that. It's almost as if the train's not there, because there's no signs of struggling. And passing the engine sheds. for a tank engine that is pretty impressive that is actually quite strong so there she goes through the tunnel and she's about to appear from the other side of the tunnel
Now she did struggle there a bit, but she managed it. And to be fair, there is a small gradient when it comes out the other end of that tunnel, but she's managed it. So in conclusion, a great model. There's not really much else to say about it. Other than the fact that <clears throat> if you have GWR locomotives in your collection, this is definitely one to get. And it doesn't matter what livery you go for, because they're still stunning.